coming to the fourth protein synthesis inhibitor, which is tetracycline. Yeah. So tetracycline um, inhibits in the early stage of protein synthesis. It blocks the tRNA site in the bacterial ribosomes, not in human or uh, eukaryotes ribosome. Therefore, when it blocks at the tRNA binding site, it stops the tRNA having with the with the amino acids here, yeah, to even bind to the ribosomes. Therefore, the protein synthesis stops. Tetracycline is also a bacteriostatic uh, agent. Yeah? It binds to the 30S subunit of the bacterial ribosome, and it has a wide spectrum of activity. All right. So um, let's have a look at the structure. So the main nucleus, yeah, the main nucleus in uh, tetracycline is actually they call it uh, naphthacine. These are the naphthacine nucleus. All right. And uh, there, there are four rings in the in the naphthacine nucleus. This is labeled with A, B, C, and D. Okay, please take note of that. And the way it is numbered is from this is number one, one, two, three, four, four A, five, five A, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and twelve A. Yeah. Um, the A, 12A, 4A, 5A and so on, these are quite important in uh, especially 12A and, and uh, here later I think 12A is the most important in the chemistry of tetracycline. Yeah? So from here you can see that uh, the only the hydrogen are actually being being um, labeled here or being uh, Appears in the name, yeah. So one, four, four, a, five, five, a, six, eleven, twelve, a, octa, yeah, stands for the hydrogen, octahydro, naphthacine. So that's the general um, naming or nomenclature of tetracycline. Okay, so now we're going into the chemistry of Tetracycline. Tetracycline uh, actually is a bit acidic, yeah. So we will go through through um, the three. The, uh, the first one. The first one is actually the chemistry. The chemistry that happens in this tricarbonyl framework. There are three carbonyls here. This first one, second one, and here is actually a carbonyl. If you this is a, it appears goes in here. This is actually a three carb tricarbonyl, three carbon, three sorry, three ketone. Uh, three carbonyl framework yeah so let's have a look so at ring a that that particular proton is quite acidic yeah it can actually then um, form a resonance all right in this particular form rather than a three ketone you would prefer to go in this particular form like an enol yeah you have this in this alkene and ol the enol, yeah. So if you add an hydroxy group, yeah, it will abstract the proton, and then these these uh, electrons will go into this tricarbonyl framework. It will just get resonance, uh, resonance of resonance form, resonance form of the this particular complex, yeah. So the pKa of this particular uh, acid. Yeah, looking at this big acid is uh, two point eight to three point four. If you take this pKa and you compare it to what what you already know, eh? for example, uh, you know HBr, HCl are really acidic, um, really really strong acid. So HBr are stronger acid. So the pKa of pKa of HBr is minus nine. For acetic acid, as we know, is actually um, it's a weak acid. Right? So the pKa of the uh, acetic acid is about four point seven six. Yeah, water is actually acidic in acidic in nature. You can uh, the pKa is five fifteen point seven, and a methyl group. Yeah, 
uh, to lose a proton is really hard for metal group because the PK is 50 compared to HBr, yeah, minus 9. HBr, the hydrogen, the proton in HBr is much easier to lose compared to the hydrogen in a metal group or even in water. Okay, just to, just to give you an idea uh, when we talk about PKA, eh? uh, because I think you are very, you are, well, not just you, probably we are very familiar with the pH, the concept of pH. When it comes to PKA, we probably tend to lose our direction or how PKA 2 point something, where does it actually appear? So this is to give you a, a guide, yeah, a very acidic, um, very uh, very strong acid will give you a minus PKA, a weak acid about 4, 4, 4 to 5, 4 to 7, um, whereas water, a neutral molecule in general, will give you a PKA of about 15.7 and so on, okay. So this is, this is, um, this part at the ring A, this acid is quite acidic. All right, so it will lead to the formation of this uh, tricarbonyl framework, whereby the overall the overall charge at this particular uh, part of the molecule can be negatively charged. All right. The second part of um, second chemistry of tetracycline would be on the uh, what we call this beta dicarbonyl system. All right or you call it phenolic enone system all right where does it happen actually it happens on the top part of the tetracycline so here on ring b c and d all right so where does the um, proton the acidic proton comes in it is actually between ring b and c so acidic proton is between ring C and, and uh, C and B. This is the acidic proton. All right. And um, let me before I go on to this one, let me show you this website. Okay. So maybe you ask, what is a beta uh, beta, beta dicarbonyl compounds? Yeah. Um, if you have a look at this. All right, this is a pentadione. There are two ketones here. This is the pentadiones. All right, two ketones here. Yeah. So uh, um, how you say it's beta, how well, people say, well, why do you call it beta? Beta stands for the proton, usually, the location of the proton. So in this case, this is alpha, this is beta. So this is the beta dicarbonyl compounds. Yeah. So. What it tells you in this uh, particular website is that um, DPK is about 8.9. Yeah, it's actually uh, close to, if you remember, uh, close to the PK of uh, acetic acid. Yeah, it says acidity is not too bad. Yeah, so if you see, this, is that it tends to form. Yeah, about 24% tends to be in this keto form, which is the two ketone. Yeah, the rest. What happens today? Uh, another uh, another seventy six percent. The other seventy six percent tends to be in this form, this eno form, or the other form. All right. Um, and why they want to be in this form is because yeah, they tend to form a cyclic pseudo six member ring. That is why it tends to be like in this form because this can form an OH group and this actually then form a pseudo six member ring which is more stable than uh, the the um, in this in this form more stable than the keto form yeah so um, you can read further I'll share I'll share um, the link with you later so let's come back to this uh, beta dicarbonyl system so what happens is in, in here is that it it will act similarly it will one rather to be rather than um in the, rather than the keto form the beta keto form this acidic proton will be um will be extracted can be extracted and it can it can also form resonance form as an enol form this is the in enol form yeah and then can be further extracted 
by uh, an, uh, a base yeah, to form again this negatively charged um, complex uh, and also the pseudo six membered ring, which is quite stable. So there's a tendency to form, um, greater tendency to form this negatively charged complex with the pseudo six membered ring, then then to form the keto form, the original form. Yeah? So the pKa of the proton here is 7.2 to 7.8. Yeah? Again, this is not, don't get confused, yeah? this is not a neutral p, uh, pH. Yeah? This is the pKa of the protons. All right. Now, let's move on to the third chemistry of photocycline. Which, is, which involves the alpha ring. This is the alpha ring. And involves the dimethyl amino moiety. In, in the stomach, for example, in any acidic medium, it will, this dimethyl amino group will pick up a proton and get a positive, and becomes a positively charged uh, moiety. All right. Um, so here, yeah. To, to remove the proton here, yeah, it's, it's not that bad because the proton here is, uh, the pKa is 9.2 to 9.7. So if you have a base that can abstract the proton here and it will form the neutral complex. Okay. Um, so this part of the structure, this part of the molecule, this dimethyl amino moiety, is important in terms of the epimerization. Okay, the active epimer or the active configuration for tetracycline is when the dimethyl amino group is at the top. So this is the plane of because the uh, tetracycline is actually quite planar. Yeah, so if the Ni the nitrogen here comes from the top okay so this is the active form of the data cycling right and but then you, um, epimerization, uh, epimerization can happen whereby you know um, you, you can actually lose this proton and somehow that the uh, diamino, diamino uh, configuration got flipped into the bottom one. All right. So this is the epi cycling. All right. And um, that epi cycling has an activity of one point five percent of the original tetracycline. All right. So. Um, this uh, epimerization can happen if tetracycline gets into a solution of uh, pH 2.2 to, to, to 6. That's, that's what happens here. Yeah? So this is very important uh, chemistry because it will, it will, it will um, it cause the um, deterioration of the activity all right, of tetracycline. The fourth chemistry, which is really, really happens, uh, is between in uh, under basic condition that OH group can actually attack intramolecularly on the uh, carbon eleven, all right, and cause the formation of iso tetracycline, which is totally inactive, all right. Uh, but usually this wouldn't happen that much, yeah, yeah, and. Um, Tetracycline has, has this amphoteric um, uh, nature. Uh, so usually it's sold as sodium or calcium, uh, or sorry, calcium or chlorine salts. Yeah? And for if it is, um, if the dimethyl, dimethyl amino moiety is, this part is charged, it's sold as a chlorine salts. And if that part of the moiety, this part of the moiety on ring A, is again charged here, yeah? negatively charged, it can be sold as a sodium salt.
Now, let's move on to the... I think this is the second clinically important chemistry for cyclin. So, uh, so what happens to this person's teeth? This, it gets discolored, yeah? So, um, this could happen. This, this discoloration could happen to a long-term um, user of tetracycline. Okay? So, in this case, um, what happens is that because of the structure, the, the nature of the tetracycline having this OH group, yeah? this uh, OH group, it will actually then chelate to a uh, metal, um, or divalent iron especially. Yeah? Uh, the complex form between these two, for example, in pH 3 to 7.5, yeah, chelation can happen at the phenolic uh, beta dicarbonyl system at ring uh, C and D, sorry, C and D. Yeah, it's not I think this is incorrectly done. This is between C, this is between B and C, isn't it? Uh, so chelation doesn't happen here. That's wrong, eh? Chelation can happen between the ring C and D. Alright. And then um, if you increase the pH beyond 7.5, 8, 9, and so on, chelation can happen at the bottom here. Alright? So um there are two sites of relation in this uh, in tetracycline in pH 3 to, 3 to 7.5. It happens between ring C and D, the OH group, uh, the enol of um, uh, ring C and D. And then at a uh, higher pH, at more alkaline pH, relation can happen around between the N, uh, sorry, the diametal a minor group and the 3 OH group. Yeah? So the complex are not absorbed. The complex are actually insoluble and uh, not active and therefore not absorbed in GIT. In other words, that um, the dose um, for the patients, you know, long-term patients, um, um, uh, actually this, 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 this antibiotic is no longer effective. In other words, yeah? if it is taken together with uh, food, that contains this um, uh, divalent iron especially. This is a very important chemistry uh, and it leads to a, f a food drug interaction or drug drug interaction. So between, especially between milk, you have calcium uh, in milk that can interact, that can actually um, get chelated by uh, the cycling. And you can also have antacids, magnesium, for example, that can also be chelated by tetracycline if you actually on a long term use. So it is actually advisable to take any of these milk or antacids, yeah, to avoid food or drug inter interaction. Uh, an hour before taking tetracycline or two hours after the meals, that's usually the case, yeah. So try to have a gap. A time gap between uh, taking tetracycline and also this food or drug. All right. So in conclusion, um, tetracycline has got um, three or four chemistry. The main, the main one are three. The three chemistries in tetracycline that involves um, ring A, the uh, tricarbonyl uh, framework, the um, Again, ring A, this uh, diamino, dimethyl amino, uh, uh, is actually talking about the epimerization as well. The third one uh, is about this phenolic enone system or the um, beta dicarbonyl uh, framework, which talking talking about the ring C and D, yeah, and and just now as we talk is about also. Um, uh, this has got, got a lot of uh, OH group uh, and it will actually um, chelate to a divalent iron, for example, calcium or in milk or magnesium, for example, in antacids. The bottom part of the cyclone usually doesn't really involve much uh, activity. They usually involve in the SAR yeah? and uh, in, in trying in the modification of the of, um, of the cyclin to form more derivatives like minocycline and so on. Yeah.